This is going to be done in green, very simple, very straightforward. So I'll do that first. Some more Q-tips. One of the reasons why I'm doing this sort of modification of the pattern is uh, it's nice knowing how to do it. Because let's be honest, most people get into doing leather so they can do different things. I'm doing a test piece on it a little bit just to make sure that, that that's actually green. Because you don't want to dip into the wrong color and then go, hey, guess what? That's not green. That's some other color. Just lay it on. It's a nice color of green. Actually, I like it. On this, it's not absolutely necessary to cover everything, although you do want to at least cover the edge that's going to be showing. And I am going to do the back. I normally do the back first, but wasn't paying attention. It's not like it really matters that much. Sometimes with the thinner leather, if you don't do the back first, then it bleeds through afterwards and kind of messes up the front. It's better just to let it bleed through to begin with and then you do uh, the top surface covering all of the bleed through that you ended up with. That one looks fine though. Do a little bit of the edges here because you'll see it on the inside a little bit. Like I said, it's not necessary but I'm doing it anyway. Just because I think it's good to be thorough. There's that one. Edges. Now in this little piece here, the edges aren't going to show. All of these edges are going to be internal. And that's going to be tricky, actually. That is a tricky stitch to do. Because there will be a part of it where you have to stitch it with a modified needle to really do it right. A regular needle just doesn't work. So there's my green. I'm going to put these pieces off to the side. I'll bevel that later, so I'm not worried about it right now. Right now, I just want to get, lay down the colors, and these are all black. I'm going to keep them separate from everything painted something else, so that I don't get them mixed up and paint the wrong thing and the wrong, the wrong color. Rest assured, it's an easy thing to do, and it sucks having to redo something from scratch because you painted it the wrong color. All these pieces are black. Now I could have on the flap, just as a side note, I could have tra uh, carried the flag up through the flap, but I decided to go ahead and do a contrast instead. It's a good design element. Now, too much symmetry looks a little bit can be too, it can look off, oddly enough. It's nice to have a little bit of asymmetry. So, I got my black here in my handy dandy sample cup holder that I made at great risk to myself. Now, um, I'm going to use one of my favorite things, Q-tips. <laughs> because they're easy to use for something like this. Just pull out a bunch of them, just in case. I could use a foam brush, but it would spread a lot of dye if I were to do that. So I think I'm just going to stick with doing this with Q-tips. And I usually do the bottom first, or the back side first, like so. This keeps me from using too much dye as well.
you use too much dye and it gets everywhere and then it doesn't want to dry it's part of the problem you don't want your you don't want to be waiting three days for the leather to dry because you drenched it in, in ink or dye There we go. That looks like it's already got a protective coat on it. Some of the leather pieces that I get are like that. That's why it just sort of runs right on it. These holes are going to be covered by the threading, so you don't need to be too worried about getting the ink all the way through the hole, because you're not going to see it uh, in the hole if there's any discoloration. The thread will literally cover all that up. You do want to do the edges, though. Make sure you get all these edges, because the edges will show. Because these edges are going to be on the outside. So that's my basic uh, coloration for the this piece. Whenever you add something to the design, you have to ask yourself those questions. Does it add to the functional design as well as the aesthetic design? Does it detract from the functional or aesthetic design? Um, ultimately, you want it to do both. You want it to add to the design, the functional design, as well as the aesthetic design. That's the ideal scenario. Otherwise, you're just doing an adornment that uh, doesn't really serve any purpose. It just looks good. And, I mean, that's not a bad way to go. I'm not going to say don't do it. Uh, it's just sometimes it can be too much. Rest assured, I've done that myself where I, I did those buckles on this bag I was working on. And these buckles were this huge, gaudy-looking thing that's hanging off. And it didn't take me long to realize, you know, i got to get rid of these things. And I literally pulled them off and replaced them with something else because I realized that they were just overkill. You, know, you don't want these things that look so large, they almost uh, look out of place. Because it will detract. And that's what it was doing, is it is detracting from the elegance of the design. Trying to do these edges here. Just about out of ink. In my little sample thing. Hopefully I have enough there to do the rest of it. We'll see in a second. This is the beauty of black. You can cover anything with black. Okay. One more, just to make sure that I've got all these areas covered. Oh, wow, there's a little rip in it somehow. I mean, it won't be seen. This will be on the seam inside, but I didn't realize there was a little rip. That's not good. I'd be redoing this if it were anywhere else. After you've dyed the uh, pieces for the back pouch, the next step, I'm going to show you how to take dye itself or leather paint and actually create uh, an aesthetic design on the pouch face itself. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. In fact, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. But the three approaches I'm going to show are how to do one with just dye and pen, one using just dye markers by themselves, and one using leather paint and pen. Uh, all of these have to be done in conjunction with resin, and I'll explain that a little bit more in depth in the respective videos. So it'll be up to you to decide which one you want to do. My uh, preferred method is to use dye with actual pens, which you can buy at a Walmart. I mean, that's what you're aiming for. You want ease of access and so yes feel free to watch these videos and then you decide which technique you want to employ